Hello to you. Today we're going to change out the spark plugs on a 1.8 Gen 3E triple eight engine. It's a 2014 Jetta in the car. I'm changing it, but it can apply to uh, any of the Gen 3s, I suppose. Let me show you the tools needed. Tools needed are going to be ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, a deep, very deep spark plug socket. Reason being, I made the mistake of thinking this was gonna work. Auto light, piece of crap. I'll tell you why. Right quick. It doesn't go all the way. And you can strip that. And I did. Oops. But this one, on Amazon, goes all the way. And you're gonna need a grip like that. So, don't make the mistake I did. Fortunately, I didn't really try to pull it out. I was on a time crunch I'm trying to make a Anyway, sorry, I'm wrapping off. Okay, and the little little pry tools, just in case, those aren't necessary completely, but they come in handy. Of course, your spark plugs. I'll link those to which ones you need in the Jetta. But here's the part number right there. It's 06K905601D. I believe originally they're Bosch. Made in USA, but the car's made in Mexico. Cool, huh? Channel locks. Of course, your light to see. Little magnet thing if you want to put your little screws and all that. Uh, aluminum man ICs. People say, uh, not people, yeah, I guess mechanics and whatnot, they say they don't use NICs due to over tightening uh, in case you over tighten it by accident. Well, just use a torque wrench if you need to. I'm just gonna do it by hand real you know, snug, not super tight. Pen oil, penetrating oil. I would like to use fuel to penetrate that since that's where fuel goes, but I don't have any fuel on me. And you could use dielectric grease if you're going to change out the boots. But I really don't believe dielectric grease is completely necessary in the boots because corrosion is, um, especially if you do it regularly, because corrosion is uh, not really too much of a problem in that area. It's more of a battery issue. And that's probably what the electric grease is, dielectric, to kind of pre prevent corrosion. And then, of course, your spark plug boots, which I'm changing mine out if you're going to change yours out. They're uh, online. I got them for 25 bucks a piece with shipping. Oh yeah, so. Also a little, you know, extension magnet comes in handy. Plus one of these little grabbers if you have them. And a six millimeter, a little socket, either a six millimeter socket or one of these little ratchets. And that's gonna be a little, to get the boots out, I'll show you guys that. Okay, first step of course is to disconnect the negative battery cable. Every time I mess with anything that has to do with spark or electric or anything that I'm going to be close to an electrical connector, I always disconnect the battery. So do that, step one, with the 10 millimeter socket. Okay. Take the valve cover off evenly, like this. Both hands, pop one edge off, and then the other. Ta-da! Yeah, I had to show you guys that because these are delicate, especially if they're old and become old and brittle, depending on how old your car is, you know. I lost a little battery, what you might call it, bolt down there. That's exactly what I said about the extension magnet. I'm always losing sh shit. Sorry. Okay, second steps. Step, third, third, second. Take off. Man, this video sucks. All right, now third step. Get your 10 millimeter socket as well. And there's gonna be these little ground cables and just take off each bolt. So one, two, and then three, four each way. And in case anyone's wondering, uh, if you take out the when you take out the boots and the coil packs, you don't need to. It's it's okay if you mix them up. They're all the same. The thing is, is the wires, of course, are coordinated. So that, I've I've seen those questions before, but no, that doesn't matter. They're not like old. Uh, what you might call it? Distributors where you had to have them properly set and all that. Nah. Well, there goes that one. Anyway, that's third step. I got it found of the car. Found it. Ha! See, that's why this magnet comes in handy, especially for me. I. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next step, and this is gonna be to make things easier, is to take this, this uh, air intake <clears throat> inlet off because uh, without it, it's gonna kind of be in the way to take everything off. Especially when it comes here, when it gets closer to the... And you know what? The way I like to work is try to make it easier. 
instead of struggling and then realizing you have to take something off. So they're held on by um, their clamps. I have a hose clamp down there by, by socket wise. The original was, was the squeeze type and I'll show you. It's one of these right here. So what I do is just get channel locks real easy, make sure it grips properly and squeeze and then that's it. Just move that out the way. And then same thing with the other one. It's difficult on here. That's why I replace them with those clamps. If you want to do that, you can do that. Hose clamps, squeeze clamps. I'd rather use hose clamps. So once you do the clamp on the bottom, be careful with these AC, these refrigerant lines. They put them right there instead of routing them a little bit more this way. Because they were, uh, they wanted to go party that day, the engineers, and they just wanted to get out early and do whatever the f But then it just pops off. Pop this side out first. And then that side. You want to get completely out the way, you can. There's a little bolt down there, I believe it is a, looks like a 10 millimeter. It's kind of difficult to get to, so I don't take that off. I just take off the PCV and that right here. Let me show. And then that pops right off. So I'll just pop it off and actually get this out the way, this inlet. Get that in out the way. You can just lift it up like an arm and get out the way. As a matter of fact, get this out too. Like I said, try to work smarter, not harder. And I know when you're in a time crunch, you just want to hurry up, but you be in more of a time crunch when you're trying to rush. So get this nifty little out the way. You see that? Oops. And then take that off as well. Just kind of. Just don't forget how everything goes. Well, you can't forget. There you go. So now it's completely out of your way. If you want to have something hold it up, you can even access the bolt easier now. You see, it's a 10 millimeter, so go ahead and do that. If you want, you can just lift it. It's up to you. Preference. Don't care. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and remove it. <laughs> and I do care. I'm, that's why I make these videos to help you guys out because some of these little German cars can be tricky and I know if I can save my gut, well, you know, people a few hundred dollars like YouTube has helped me in the past and you know, cause there's been out twos that I watch as well and I didn't know how and, and then, so that's why. But yeah, it's a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and move it out the way. Fortunately, I guess last time I did remove it for something. I forgot what I did. And uh, I didn't really tighten it that much. So I just did it by hand. So I can just do it by hand right now with the yeah, get that out the way. It's a 10 millimeter as well. Oh, okay. Okay, now, here's another thing where I messed up. I, for some reason, I didn't think I was going to hit this connector, but I did last time. I, I didn't even get to change them. I was such in a hurry. I had to go to work and all this. Uh, I broke it. Now, I could have <laughs> I could have either resoldered it and tried to Save the connector to this, but I couldn't so I had to buy a brand new high-pressure fuel pump Which fun fact I couldn't find a high-pressure fuel pump for the 1.8 for who knows what reason um, So I had to buy one for two from the 2.0, but it's the same exact thing. Anyway, I'm changing that out too And let me show you how to change out the, the, the take out the connector. You see where I broke it I'm only human so don't put the blame on me, but this one Make sure to connect it because, like I said, you don't think you're going to hit it. And then when I was taking out the last boot, I heard something break. I was like, ah, what the f So that totally ruined my day. Okay, so this disconnects like this. And where's the little tab? And then this press is up, pulls up back, and then pull it out. It's going to be the same one it's connected, just, just hard to grip right now, but... And then there you go. So move that out the way. Safety. You know, I made the mistake of doing that. Don't be like me, folks. Don't be like me. Okay, after you get the ground wire off, then you're going to get the boot. Um, we're not going to take off the boots yet, but we're going to get the, the boot bolt off. And that's a um, 10 millimeter socket as well. That's all 10 millimeter across. I'm going to take that off, and that's going to be a long bolt. And then do that enough for. And let me show you this. Sorry. My aim is pretty bad. 
and all four. Next up, take the connectors off. Um, the connectors off first because we try to take the boots off, you'll see the difficulty. This pops up, snaps up, and then it pop pries off. Okay, let me show you the other one. See, you hear that click? This one I broke last time. <laughs> yeah, I've tried this twice already and I've broken so many things. Uh, crap. Okay. This one's already disconnected. Okay. If you don't hear it try to click, then don't try to click. It's probably already disconnected. And then, there you go. You got all that. Try to, you can't really get these too much out the way because they're kind of, they're, uh, they're, housed down by this, this wire right here. Next up is the fun part, these damn boots. Now, there's a lot of people that try to wiggle them out. They say wiggle them out. Wiggle them out's not gonna work. Not if it's your first time at, 60, I'm at 69,000 miles. It's not gonna work. The boot is gonna separate, which is okay because it's, a two, it's actually a two-piece part. So, with that said, I know ECS Tuning sells a, uh, I just found it right now, uh, you know, a little fork that takes the boots out. You can do that or you can use brute strength like all real mechanics. It's up to you. Actually, it takes a lot of strength, but what I do is, uh, that's how I broke <laughs> something last time. And you're really worried right now. You're like, ah, oh, crap, my boots came out. Oh my God, but it's okay. It's a two piece. Now let me show you. And the way I found this out is by just looking actually, there's a spring in there and I thought, oh, a spring. What do springs do? Of course they, for suction, right? So get your little six millimeter, you know, little regular socket. Deep in. Kind of plunge it out. And there you go. And that's how you do those little, see the little spring? So that's a little trick that I actually figured out. It's tricky indeed, it's tricky indeed. And then continue with the rest of them. They're gonna be difficult, be careful. Make sure you have this connected, don't be like me. The force just popped that thing right off. It's really brittle. You know what, as a matter of fact, there's a connector, I just saw this right here. Disconnect that. Disconnect it, everything as much as possible out the way before you break. <laughs> you know, I didn't even see this actually. So disconnect that. Have everything out the way and then use brute force to take those out. Or you can use that little tool that ECS tuning sells. Uh, I don't have the tool, but I can link it if it help you guys out. Okay, I got it disconnected. It's a little push tab. It's not too bad. See, it's kind of good working on a newer car because the tabs are still, you know, not too, not too brittle yet. And then uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Take these. There you go. I take the rest of them out. Let me see my camera. I'm sorry about the camera shakiness and all that crap, but it's kind of hard to mix. Can you see right there? Yeah, you can see right there, okay. Oh, well that one. It's because I already took them off previously. <laughs> but they're difficult. Oh, good. Well, no, it's not that easy. It's gonna take force when you first do it. Like this one right here. I'm gonna put new boots in completely, just so I can have them changed. Rubber, you know, gets old and brittle as well, so I'm, I'm just gonna... Oh, this one came out together. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Anyway, well, that's because I just did them the other day. But let me show you again. The, where's that little tool? Damn it. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my tools. And there it is. Remember, it's a six millimeter. And then the same thing. And now you're not going to break nothing. Don't worry. Put it in deep enough. Just plunge it out. And be careful that the spring doesn't pop up when you do that and fall everywhere like it did on me the other day. And, and then, once you got all the boots out, I said I wish I could use fuel to do this because that's where fuel goes, but I really don't feel comfortable using too much pinner oil. But try it with the socket first, and if you feel that it's a little bit too difficult, don't risk breaking the plug and getting it to the head. I was looking at the plugs. They don't look like they can possibly break at the connection point where the socket is, but I really don't want to risk it at all so just get your penetrating oil and spray 
spray it in. I wish I had a little nozzle, but it was difficult to get in there. And honestly, if you can have the car uh, sitting down, sitting for the most of the day, or even a, a full day, do so and let it sit for a while, so you won't have such difficulty pulling them out. So I'm gonna let it sit. I'm gonna go cut the weeds. I'm not gonna do a how-to on cut weeds. Oh, well, maybe I should. And then come back to the car in a few hours. See you guys then, which you won't really realize because it's just an edited video. I need to use a restroom. And after you let it sit a while, actually let it sit overnight, actually for a day and a half, because uh, had I had the time. So uh, I spread a pretty decent amount of penetrating oil in there, fluid. So what I'm gonna do, so there too much won't go in the combustion chamber, is get a paper towel. And um, absorb what I can. So I won't have to worry about so much falling into the combustion chamber. You could fold it up neatly and then try to do it all. Fancy, fold it up. That's what I do. And just, and if anything, you can push. push down on it and then to grab it you know use the little have you have a what you might call I use this this is why these come in handy for me if you want to be more tedious you can really really fold it up real good I shouldn't even absorb nothing so I'm gonna do If you really want to go all out, you can get a shop vac and absorb it. Okay, now get your socket, deep socket. This one's not magnetic, but that's okay because I have a magnet. But if you have um, if you can buy a magnetic one that's deep, then truly recommend it. I bought this one because I was in a hurry and I saw it was deep. So yeah, rush, rush. And then, it's going to be counterclockwise. There you go. It's going to take a little bit of force. Don't force it too much. If it's still fine, it's hard. Either let it sit longer or spray more fluid in and do that to all four. Undo the rest by hand and then like I said if you have a magnetic socket, great. If you don't, you can either use a little puller or a little magnet. They come right out. Yeah. Here's the fun part. Ah, oh, shit, you can't see. I'm looking at an inspection, and the, there is quite a bit of carbon buildup. Uh, it's a direct injection engine, so of course, it's right there. Um, I've been using premium since, shit, since I bought the car. I guess it doesn't really make, looks like, from what I can see, pretty good amount of carbon buildup. Hold up. All right, I don't know if you guys can see it on my inspection camera I'll have to post that separately do an inspection well shit I don't have an, a, a memory card in there but man it looks like quite a bit of carbon buildup I'm kind of disappointed it's a 69,000 miles and it looks it looks black it looks black let's do the other pistons let's take a look damn what the fudge yeah that looks like a diseased liver. That is a lot of. Wow. No good. No bueno. No bueno. Well, 70,000 miles. My maxima. That <laughs> cleaner pistons, big time. Big time. Of course, not direct injection, but. And that had 80,000 miles. 85 when I bought it. So. Yikes. Here are the plugs. There's a new one. 
brand spanking shiny. No suit, of course, and then here's a any one of them, I guess, no matter. All the cylinders seem to be the same, so I guess that's kind of good. Uh, comparing the sugar, I'm a little bit better. I didn't know it was my gas mileage start to decrease after a while. But there you go, so change your plugs. <sighs> Pretty soon on these cars, I guess. 60,000 miles is too much of an interval, I'm assuming. And I'm barely at 69,000 miles. I do drive the car fairly hard at times, so... It's supposed to be that Harps of Carbon cleanup, but hmm. I don't know, I'm just kind of disappointed right now. Okay, and then onward. I'm a little bit disappointed about how much carbon was built up in there, but I get a fuel system cleaner or whatever. Anyway, now we're going to get our plugs. <sighs> Stupid piece of crap. Sorry. We're going to get our plugs. I should edit that, huh? We're gonna get our plugs and put NICs on them. Of course, make sure your plugs are the same for the Jetta, the ones, the OEM. They don't need to be gapped, they're already pre gapped. And so you won't have to put uh, spray so much penetrating oil next time on them. Use a. Uh, we're gonna put NICs. Oh, look, this one came with a protective cover. Wow. Oh, well, piece off. Anyway, <sighs> just a little bit irritated. Get some NICs. I got I use the Permatex NICs, and like I said, uh, I was reading. Mix it up real good. I was reading. Um, see, it's kind of watery. Gotta mix it up. It's supposed to be over tightening issues, but man, if you don't use NICs, man, you're really having those threads. It's possible they could also, if there's moisture buildup, they could rust out because they felt real or carbon out because for example this you can feel the greediness when I, when I uh, loosen them you can you can even hear it just like sand no good so what we're gonna do now I'm not gonna use too much just a little bit and put it on the threads gotta use another and the threads only And uh, a very fine layer. Don't need too much because if you put too much, it's going to ooze out onto your engine. Hey, maybe it'll help with the carbon. Who knows? And then just get a little bit. Fine layer. Fine, fine layer. I like the carbon built up on my pistons. Fine layer. And then do that with all of them. Don't put too much, like I said. We'll make sure not to get any in the electrode. Cover it all. Try not to make a mess like I am. I'm good at making messes and breaking stuff. I don't know how I do this YouTube videos. See what you got there. You need to clean them, clean them. And do that with all of them. And get a new camera if you're going to be making YouTube videos. All right, once you get your uh, NICs on, here's your spark plugs. Make sure they're clean at the edge, just in case any contaminants or whatever. I think I got a contaminant on this one. No, I didn't. And then drop them in carefully. Get your little magnet or your magnetic socket. My magnet broke. Got Uh, invest in good tools. Yeah. See that? And then try to get that by hand, which it's going always by hand first. Because of course, you start something, you can't feel the force of it. Forget it. You're gonna end up. And then I got that by hand. And then what you want to do after that is get your socket. Get your socket. Sorry, I'm a little tired. 
A little slow right now, just do some more stuff. And the specs call for 25 Newton meters, which is 18. Stupid magnet, I'm so pissed off about that. 18 of foot pounds, so really, not really tight at all. You can feel it. It's good, nice and thread, nice and smooth. Keep going. Very soft turns. I may feel like it's never going to end, but it does. Eventually. There it is. And honestly, I don't have a torque wrench. My bad. But don't go too tight if you're doing it by hand. 18 no me uh 18 um I'm sorry, 18 foot pounds is not much obviously. So maybe one right and that's snug and that's it do all four which is what I'm gonna do okay again let me show you closely I get it with the magnet I put it in drop it in and I fill it in fill it in real softly and I turn it with the magnet and then it turns and once it's once it's seated in at least a few threads it'll the magnet will come out without the plug okay and then you do the socket Very softly. This is because these things cross thread so damn easily. And then very softly. Don't go fast. Don't go hard because even this could over tighten. And then just keep going. It might seem like forever. Just run the step one more time just so you guys can see. As you can tell, I have everything taken apart. That little part that I messed up. Yep, and it's like 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm tired and I have to edit this video. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to post it in random frames. What the hell with it? You'll figure it out. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, let's type by hand. And really, you don't even, you know, you go that time. I need to get a truck wrench. I actually have one on order. I go right there. That's it. That is it. So, okay. Okay, once you get your uh, plugs back in, go ahead and put the boots, and I'm putting new ones in, but the old ones, same thing. New ones come already intact with everything, so I'm just kind of snapping in. It doesn't matter which one, they're all the same boots. It's the connectors that matter. Make sure it seats right. And... There you go. That's what the spring is for, for it to catch. And do that on all four. Okay, coil packs are in. Bolts. And of course, don't forget, always do everything by hand. If you wanna go stripping threads, the only thing that you wanna strip is by hand, okay? Long bolts first. You know what, another thing, I'm not gonna do it because I'm already in my fourth bolt, but that anti-seize, take advantage of it. If you want to use it on other bolts and stuff too, so just so it can be easier to thread in and won't feel so, you know, and be uh, protect, you know, the threads and whatnot, go ahead and do so. That's just a little note. I'm not because I'm tired, lazy, slacker. <sighs> Stupid camera. Uh, next up is these collections. Oh, collections. <laughs> Connections. Uh, you push it down until they click. You hear a little click. Your uh, your little ground wires. That's why it's good to have those little magnetic bolts. Because I just have everything right there. Of course, by hand and do all four of those. And then uh, your connection that you took out uh, earlier, which was this little guy over here. And um, that's pretty much it. I put everything back. This is separate, so you didn't have to take that out. 
and then put the the this thing back there's the little bolt that goes back there and that's it the trickiest part was the boots and um yeah and please again make sure to take this off when you're done when uh, you do it or you break the damn thing like i did yeah that's it thanks for watching tube you youtube subscribe like etc etc thank you bye guys German cars.